G'day YouTube, one MJ here and welcome back. Right, sad day afternoon here in Australia. Market's down again, 2.2%. So now we're under that 2.9 trillion, down to 2.84 trillion. Uh, and my guess is we're probably going to go a little bit lower over this weekend. Now again, that's just my guess. Never financial advice, but I just see us possibly going a little bit lower. I don't know how much lower we'll go, but I definitely think we can go a little bit lower. And when we get into the charts, I'll show you why. Now, Bitcoin dominance is up a little bit. I mean, this fluctuates sort of from day to day. People get excited uh, about altcoins and Bitcoin dominance goes down. Uh, things get a little bit scary and everyone gets out of the altcoins and gets back into Bitcoin. So uh, it is a bit of a fluctuating market at the moment. Uh, volume's low. Again, that's generally to be expected on the weekends, although it doesn't take much volume. Come sort of Sunday stateside time, we might see a bit of volume because it's easy to push the prices up when the volume is low and gas prices are still pretty high. But look, we come over to the markets. I mean, it looks like a bloodbath so far in the top sort of 13, 14. There's not one green and the market is down 2.2% overall. Guaranteed there's going to be at least one or two outliers in the top 100. So what's performed well in the top 100 in the last 24 hours? There we go. Mana just continues to skyrocket. This is absolutely flying at the moment. Uh, and Grayscale have quite a large trust and obviously that's part of the uh, digital uh, currency group as well. So performing quite well. IOTX, uh, again, making a bit of a comeback. Like I said, they might be you know down for a day or two, but if they're still coins that are on the way up, then they'll probably be up in the next few days. So that's continuing its uh, good form. Uh, Icon out of nowhere making a bit of a comeback. Uh, Crypto.com doing well. The Sandbox continuing to pump. Perp. Chili's an engine. There we go. They were up a few days before. Then they were down. Now they're back up again. The whole sort of NFT space, metaverse kind of space, gaming space is doing quite well at the moment. Stacks doing well. Basic attention. Look. A number of coins uh, have got some gains there. Look, only really two really sort of, well, one, no, two really good gains because IOTX had over 15% in 24 hours. Then we just got a couple of nice single digit movers and then we really are getting into lo the low kind of movers there, like less than a percent uh, for some of these coins. But any gain is a good gain. You'll take it any day. But we saw it was pretty red before. So what's performed not so well then? And this doesn't look so good. Litecoin down, but again, this was up to, I think, $250, $260 thereabouts. Same with KuCoin. All these coins were pumping literally just the other day. Loopring, same thing. Now they're having a bit of a pullback. And if there's still more momentum left in them, then in the next few days, they'll might most likely be on the upside. Uh, but look, the losses aren't that bad. Again, Litecoin came uh, from quite a ways down. It was uh, low in the $100 mark. I'm pretty sure it was like $130, something like that, uh, to get up to here. So quite a nice move and just having a bit of a cool off. And the same with a lot of these other projects. So not too many gains. And look, the losses overall aren't too bad either. But we do need to remember the market is down 2.2%. And I wouldn't be surprised if this comes down lower. And I'll show you why. Number one, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. As we can see, we had that really good pump. And this is almost a bit of a mirror image of this just in reverse sort of. So again, we pumped up really high and then we had to come back down and test. Now this is very interesting here. This little mark here that just dipped down to around about $62,360. The reason this is interesting is we looked at the... Uh, the futures markets and I put this in the other day. I said, this is the buy zone. Look where it wicked down to got right inside that buy zone. Now, I'm still not sure this is completely done. I think there, more, there may still be a little bit more to come. But if it doesn't, like I said, if you had your buy orders set at around about $62,800, sort of something like that, then they would have uh, likely got filled. Uh, and again, I think it's hard to see with the buy zone thing. Yeah, we'll move it over there. What do we get down to? About 62000 Four hundred and sort of forty-five fifty, and I did say sixty-two thousand sort of five hundred thereabouts would be a good uh, target, and sure enough, that's exactly where it hit. So I can pull this back over here. We'll just put that out of the way so it won't affect any more coming through. Now what we're going to do is wait and see if tomorrow it doesn't maybe come lower and give us another buy point. So if you're looking to buy Bitcoin in here could be a good buy now there's no guarantees so what we need to do is have a look back and this could fail though so this could keep coming down 
and maybe we're going to come back down in sort of around here the 59 58 thousand dollar level definitely possible that we maybe see something like that i'm not expecting that but just keep in mind that that's something that could happen all right, a couple of things I wanted to look at. This is very, very interesting. At least I thought it was. So Alameda Research and Cumberland acquired nearly 55% of Tether's total supply. So two companies have been responsible for buying two-thirds of Tether's supply since its inception. This is all the way back in 2015. Now, Alameda Research, that's Sam Bankman Fried uh, and FTX, and so they have been heavy into USDT or i.e. Tether. So very, very interesting. I thought that they had bought so much. Now, even more so, a majority of the volume representing $49.2 billion worth of Tether's total supply was acquired in 2020 alone. So last year, they were really yeah, going heavy into it. So, you know, people wonder about Tether and, you know, a lot of people were saying it was, you know, Binance and Bitfinex and things like that. Uh, well, it seems like not nah, Alameda Research had a whole lot more uh, and Cumberland as well. And look, these are big companies. So I don't think they would want to be doing anything to, you know, or involved in anything that they thought was, you know, a lot of people will say crypto is somewhat dodgy. So I'm going to say, you know, at least very unlikely to be highly dodgy. So yeah, I guess that's, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. Uh, it makes me, again, a little bit more confident of USDT because they have uh, so much involved in USDT. Uh, again, I'll just call it Tether because that's the name of it. They have so much uh, involved in Tether and these are big companies. I would think that they would have done their kind of research and made sure that you know, USDT slash Tether uh, was doing the right thing. Uh, anyway, just something I found interesting. And you know, again, I thought a lot more was sort of Bitfinex and Binance, but they were actually, don't get me wrong, Bitfinex, Bitfinex and Binance were using a lot of USDT. Uh, again, I said I was going to call it Tether. So a lot of Tether, but they weren't even coming close to Alameda Research and Cumberland. So there you go. All right. So this is a reason that may have spooked the markets a little bit. And look, it was kind of to be expected. So the SEG has rejected Vanex Bitcoin spot, uh, spot Bitcoin ETF. Uh, and then one of the things they cited was price manipulation concerns. But yet they will allow a futures backed one, which is just all about the price. So I did find that a little bit funny. But anyway, you know, I don't think any spot Bitcoin ETFs will be approved this year, maybe next year. And my gut feeling says it'll probably, they'll probably get, they'll probably get, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They will probably get over the line. That's probably the best way to put it. In the bear market <laughs> that's that'll just be the way it was when the market's finally crashing now they go yep this is when we're going to uh, allow a spot bitcoin etf you know, it's just you know it wouldn't surprise me if that's what happens but i can't see one getting done anytime soon i think you know grayscale have probably got the best bet of getting one considering how much bitcoin they actually own but yeah i don't see it happening this year uh, and i'd be surprised if it happens even in this cycle but you know we can keep our fingers crossed but this this may have something to do with you know the the markets excuse me being on the downside a little bit the the markets can be pretty fickle and it doesn't take much to spook people because a lot of people are here on pure speculation like literally nothing else they don't care about the tech all they want is to make money and so they bought some bitcoin thinking yep there's going to be a spot Bitcoin ETF, you know, coming in the next sort of few days. We know our next one and then they hear it doesn't get approved and they go, all right, well, I'm selling out because this is going to go down a whole lot further or we didn't get the outcome that we all wanted. Legitimate, pure speculation and those kind of things do affect the market. So I think that may have had something to do with it. Right, the whole NFT space and gaming just continues to get bigger and bigger. So Cosmos and Solana Ventures have joined in a $725 million Series B crypto uh, investment for our gaming platform Forte. Now, not only was it them, but Polygon also got in. So whereas at Polygon Studios was also part of this $725 million into a Series B for a crypto gaming platform. That is humongous money and again that's got to tell you where the money's going gaming will be big now you know trying to pick the winners is going to be hard we all would have loved to have been on alluvium early on or 
uh, Axie Infinity early on, and there's lots of people, you know, running out there and, you know, looking for the next best thing. And don't get me wrong, I'd love to be able to do it, but, you know, NF, oh, sorry, gaming for me is a little bit like NFTs. Uh, I just don't know enough about it. I like playing games, but how you know which game's going to do really well and all the rest of it, yeah, that's too hard. There's so many different games out there. Really, I'll wait for something to become a bit of a somewhat clear leader uh, before putting money in. But again, I don't want to wait until the very end of it all. But yeah, a very hard sector. Again, you know, like I said, for NFTs for me, I've only bought one NFT uh, and you know it's the crazy skulls and so far I really like it I'm on the discord every now and then having a look at what's going on and you know commenting on certain things but that's the only nft that I have been involved in because I really just don't know enough about the space and I thought they just like cool uh, looked cool I like skulls and things like that so yeah that was me all right what I want to get on to now is I did cover this yesterday, but this is kind of my pick for the week. This is one of the blue chips that I like the most, and the charts are just looking, to me, outstanding. And I must stress again, this is never financial advice. You do you. Don't do anything simply because I like it. But Aave, this chart just looks outstanding. Now, this is, remember, Aave used to be uh, ETH Lend, uh, Aave Old, and then it turned into Aave only just last year. So it's a fairly small short chart, I should say. But this is where it kind of really took off uh, and it got up to, I think, about sort of 600, yeah, 680, what do we got? Yeah, 600 and sort of 30 dollars at its peak. It then got all the way down to, let's go, what do we got down here? 169 dollars, but that's some wicks really, we'll just say about 184 dollars. But it's just been in sort of consolidation mode around that 300 dollar mark for a very, very long time. So today I got rid of some underperformers. And I, I won't say I backed the truck up on Aave, but I definitely made a somewhat reasonable size investment into Aave. Because I, I, I still believe in Aave. I think it is really one of the blue chips of DeFi. I don't think DeFi is going anywhere, so I've made a definite play on it. But it wasn't just based on this. Again, I looked at the ETH chart, and the ETH one, once you take off the logarithmic scale, just looked amazing. This was the bottom for Aave. Had a huge pump. And it's this, this isn't so much a sell-off, again, because this price has been pretty stable around the $300 mark. This is just ETH went on a really big pump, uh, and then Aave started to lose against ETH. But look where it is now, sitting right on this line. Now, it absolutely could go lower. I just want everyone to understand that. Aave could be getting ready to set a new all-time low against Ethereum. But the upside... If it just gets back to where it was before, I mean, that is massive. That is absolutely huge. I mean, let's have a look at that. We go from here up to 350% returns if it can gain just back to its old all-time high against Ethereum. So that is Ethereum is probably still going to go up, but Aave just goes on an absolute tear. So I couldn't... I just couldn't pass that up. I looked at that and said, yep, the risk to reward is fine. Again, I haven't bet the house on it. If it doesn't work out, then so be it. You know, I'll have, you know, I'll have lost some money, but it's nothing major. I'll be able to recoup. But also I had a look at this against Bitcoin and again, something similar. It plays out this pattern, has this big pump up, comes down, finds a low, sets, you know, set a low there and then comes back and sort of finds its new low. Look where we are now, finds a low, setting a new low, and I just get the feeling like it's getting ready to go up now. What I also noticed is look where it's finding this new low. Old resistance and support. So again, it definitely could go lower. I'm not gonna say Aave couldn't then come down to here. And this is against Bitcoin, so Bitcoin gets on a bit of a run. Again, the dollar value, it's been trading sideways for ages, and that's generally accumulation time. Now again, you do you, you've got to work out what you want to do, but I just looked at this chart and said, right out, it has a spike, it gets pretty quiet, then has another spike, gets a bit quiet, spike, and now it's coming down and it's trying to find its flaw at the moment. Again, everyone's saying that there's another big altcoin cycle coming, I don't know when it is, uh, I suspect there is another one as well. 
I don't know if it's coming in the next sort of few weeks, i.e. December. I don't know if we're going to get that blow-off top that everyone's looking for. I think it's more like likely to come later, but I just get the feeling like Ave, outside of some sort of you know black swan, grey swan event or something like that, or that we have double topped and the market's going down, I think Ave will just kind of hold its dollar value around that $300 mark. And once everything starts to run, once Bitcoin starts to run or Ethereum starts to run, then Aave will start to run. And I think, again, it'll run extremely hard. So Aave is my pick. And literally only a matter of oh, probably an hour or two ago, I made a substantial, not a substantial because it's not a substantial. For my altcoins, it's a substantial uh, move. Absolutely. That now puts Aave up in one of my uh, biggest positions in altcoins for sure outside of uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. But not my biggest, I've got other ones that are bigger, but Aave, I definitely made a move. And it was mainly based on the US dollar chart. Again, just sideways for so long. Found its peak, found its trough, now it's in the middle and just the volatility is super low on the moment. Now this could drag on for another sort of couple of weeks, another couple of months, but I just get the feeling like eventually it is going to pop. And particularly when I saw it here, it is now down at its all-time low against Ethereum. So yes, it could go lower, but I just don't know how much lower it's going to go before it finally builds up enough steam to then just shoot up. And again, Aave, in most people's eyes, is one of the blue chips, if not the blue chip, for DeFi. It'd be up there with Compound and Curve. Uh, you know, Maker's up there as well, but it just doesn't have the popularity. Compound, Curve... Ave, very very nice so yeah that's my pick now what i want to do is leave you with a little bit of information from tech dev this was actually interesting so he's mapped out all the all the bull markets over bitcoin's history and he's put them into charts and he's shown them on fib retracement levels so this is when they're uh not on the logarithmic and this is when they're on the logarithmic so you can see always finds a flaw of the 1.272. And once you finally break out above, above the 1.618, it just moons. It's done the same thing for here. Basically found a flaw at the 1.272. Once it broke out above the 1.68, here it had a little bit of a pullback, but once it truly broke out, went on its big massive move. Look where we are now. Found a flaw on the 1.272. And now we're back up testing this 1.618. Now, again, it could go lower. Maybe it's got to come back down. But once we do break above this, chances are it's going to go much higher. Now we come over here. Look at this. The 1.618 again and the 1.272 finds the low. Once we break out, it finds its new high. 2017 finds its low at the 1.272. Once it finally breaks out properly above the 1.618, look where it goes, 5.618, 5.618. Look where we are now. Look where the 5.618 is, up around $233,000. Now, again, I just need to reiterate, past performance doesn't dictate what's going to happen in the future but it can just give you a good guide of where it's possibly going to go to. Now, does that mean you wait to $233,000 to take profits? No, it just means somewhere along this ride would be a good idea to start taking some profits because there's no guarantees that this doesn't go higher. Because look what we have here, 2.272, higher. 2.272, it went higher. So 2.272 is just under $200,000 it's definitely possible that this goes higher. Not guaranteed. And again, it hasn't broken above this, but it's picked it almost perfect every single time. So it's saying that Bitcoin should top out somewhere around $233,000. Now, if that's what Bitcoin does, imagine what the altcoins are going to do. Because, I mean, that is a... It's a 3x. It's over 3x. It's nearly a 4x from where Bitcoin is now to get to there. Imagine what some of those altcoins will do. Ethereum's probably going to nearly 8x, possibly 10x. We'll have to wait and see. And if Ethereum's going to 10x on top of what uh, Bitcoin's, you know, possible 4x is going to do, then other altcoins are possibly going to, you know, 
20, 30, 40, and 100x. So I just wanted to leave you with that. Again, I don't wanna get your hopes up too much. It's not guaranteed that this is what's going to happen, but it's very, very interesting. So for me, I won't be waiting to here to take profits. Again, for Bitcoin, I'm not really selling any Bitcoin, but if Bitcoin gets over $150,000 and definitely up around the $200,000, I probably will take a little bit of profit. But other than that, I plan on holding my Bitcoin really long term. But what I will do is I will wait for some kind of topping formation from Bitcoin because usually your altcoins are going to run just a little bit longer. Now, because a lot of people know that, I don't think the altcoin cycle will run for as long. I think once Bitcoin tops out, you may have a week or two. And then I think it just all goes pop. And now it could be even less because, again, there's a lot of people in crypto now. We all read, not we all, but anyway, the smart people are reading this stuff and looking at this stuff. So it could all be very, very quick. Just have yourself ready. And again, once you start to see, because Tech Dev will keep letting everyone know, once things are starting to get up really, really high, I'd say up around this $150,000, $180,000 mark, that's if it makes it to there, I think that would really be a good time to start looking at taking some profits from Bitcoin. Uh, and then again, the altcoins will most likely run for a little bit longer after that. But again, I just, I've got to stress, there's no guarantees that it plays out like this again, because there's too many people that have seen this. I actually think it'll be underdone. It'll just be how much it's going to be underdone. But also maybe retail come in in a really big way and we just now smash through these levels. I really don't know. My gut feeling says underdone, but Again, we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. I'd love to know your thoughts about you know where this is going to go. Do you think tech dev uh, is on the money that it will be close to here? Or do you think all these charts that have been put out by people like uh, Willy Woo, Will Clemente, Plan B are going to be invalidated to the upside or to the downside? Let me know your thoughts down below. Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on the game train at the moment. We're down a little bit, but I don't think it's over just yet. And I'll see you next time.